pleasure to introduce our speaker. Uh, Minister Wayne is, I just, he's one of my favorite people. I, I wish I could be all chill, but I really am so grateful being at The Way has been a chance to get to know him. I think if you have a chance to come out to our men's ministry on Monday, I really want to encourage all the brothers to take advantage of the chance to be in a space that Minister Wayne is leading. Every time I listen to him talk about how he is paying attention to what God is doing in his life, when I listen to him talk about being a father and how he is letting God mold him as a father, whenever I listen to him talk about how he is in the community, he, I don't know if you know the work that Minister Wayne's doing, but um, you know, when young men are making some difficult decisions, it's Brother Wayne that is out there with them day in, day out. You know, when like communities are impacted by gun violence, Brother Wayne's one of the first people that gets called and shows up right there and is holding people's hands and walking people through um, difficult situations. And I just so respect that labor, um, but I also respect the character that it's taking him to do that with such maturity and grace. And we're really lucky to have him here at The Way. He's also the only person we make him move his own podium when he comes up to speak. So would you please put your hands together for Minister Wayne as he speaks to us this morning. Good morning, family. Can we give God some glory? Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Now, can we give his only begotten son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, some glory? Yes. Before we move any further, I ask you to bow your heads and pray with me. Lord, we come thanking you for your blood that reaches low. Lord, we thank you for this time that was already aligned. Lord, we thank you for this space where you've chose to show your face. Lord, I ask you to remove me, but approve me so that you may work through me. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Pastor Erna, to, for the introduction. Um, it definitely is a passion of mine to, to live into the, the quote I've, I've coined that I'm just trying to be what I didn't see. Um, today, I stand in front of you and I get to talk about topics that I'm very passionate about, which is transformation and activation. Um, I love seeing transformed lives because I am the recipient of a transformed life by way of Jesus Christ, my Savior. But I am also activated, and the work I do that she talked about only comes by way of the Holy Spirit. And so as I step into spaces, I see people just like God saw me. Even when I was way out, doing wayward things that didn't reflect where I am today. He saw me. Marvin Sapp has a song that saw, says he saw the best in me. And so I like to be in spaces and look at people dead in their faces and telling them I know where you are, but I know where you can be. Sometimes that's all we need because we don't have the vision, we don't have the wherewithal, we don't have what it takes because of traumas and life, life circumstances, so we can't see it. So God has put some of us on this earth to be representation so that we may show others where they can be. And so today, that's what I'll be talking about, about getting from where we are to where we should be. Um, I would be remiss if I didn't start by acknowledging my squad in the house. Who is my squad? My mama is here. Wave, ma. Wave. That's my beautiful mama. And the other two that's part of my squad is my two older brothers, Greg and Anthony, right there. This is definitely a special day to me because none of them have all been in, in the same space when I've spoken, and my mother and my middle brother have never seen me preach. So it's a very special day to me. 
Um, why I call him my squad? Because we all we got. When my mom made the decision to take this leap of faith and leave New York, and we came to California, we was the only family, and we've been the only family that we have here since. We've been here almost 40 years, and we don't have aunties, we ain't have uncles, we ain't have grandmothers, we ain't have, we ain't have none of that. Never had. That's why they my squad, because they all we got. And so I love y'all dearly, man. I'm, I'm so thankful. You know, I was over there crying like a baby because I was flashing back to all that we came through, y'all. We didn't see this, but God did. So I'm humbled and I'm thankful for this space. You know, but I, I just, <laughs> that lady right there is my shero. I mean, I can't tell you <laughs> how aligned everything I went through with her as her baby boy prepared me to stand here right now. That lady has had more surgeries than anybody I've ever seen or ever heard of. To the point, when I first started therapy and I gave him my story, he identified to me that as an adolescent from dumping blood buckets and, and going to the hospital and sitting in waiting rooms by myself waiting for them to come out and tell me my mother was dead, I had came to the conclusion that I would lose my mama on a daily basis. I had came to the conclusion if I go home from school, mom is probably dead. Because when I left, she sure wasn't moving. She wasn't, the lady has been through so much, but somebody need to just say, but God. A few years ago, and, and, and the thing about this lady is, she go to the hospital for eight, nine months stay, and in that time, she done had three to four surgeries in one stay. The last time she was in the hospital for a long time, it was about three, four years ago. And she went in, and I think she stayed about eight months. She had three surgeries. But God is so good, because at that point, my mother was so unhealthy. I, I like to say she had given up. She had Parkinson's and diabetes. And when she left that place, she didn't have neither one. Yeah. yeah. These are the things I've seen God do. And while sometime when I was young, I was, I was mad that I had to be the baby boy and endure all this, I understand now that God was downloading and installing a faith that I would use for this day. And that's a message for somebody because you can be going through things and you might not understand, but you just got to say, God, I don't know, I don't understand, and I don't want to be here, but I trust you. Yeah. The most heroic thing she ever did, though, in my life, to me, was when I was about two or three years old. Me, my brothers, and her, Live with my father in New York. I was born in New York. We all were, my mother was born in Arkansas. And she made the decision to leave my father who wasn't such a good man at that time. Now, we talking about 78 or 79, women weren't making moves like that, people. You got three little boys and you gonna say, I'm gonna pack this thing up and get out of here? And I don't know where it's gonna lead me? We end up finding ourselves in Little Rock, Arkansas. We end up finding ourselves in a church. That church had things called general assemblies with all the different churches from around the country, and we end up in Oakland, California, and we've never been back. That was God's alignment. That was a leap of faith, y'all. 
And I want you to grab on to that because as you, as you engage the message today, you're going to see all through everything I'm talking about, every story I give you, there will be moments where you will have to make a move. If you want to get from where God, where you are to where God wants you to be, there are some decisions that's going to have to be made that I have to make a move. Tell y'all, you know, we, we've been real serious, so I'm going to give y'all a funny moment with my mom. When she went through that eight months, <laughs> when she went through that eight months, she, she ended up losing about 100 pounds because they had her on the tube for about seven of those months. She couldn't eat. They was feeding her through a tube. And when she... I don't know exactly the time, but it was about a month before she came home and they had her in this, in this, in this, in this place uh, in Alameda. It's like the place where you, okay, you've had your surgeries, you had everything, and now we're gonna, we, you're almost going home. And I remember one day getting a call from my mom, it was Halloween. <laughs> she laughing. <laughs> and we have, a, we, have, we have an amazing relationship. Oh, we've been through some up and downs, though. Don't get it twisted. She called me, I said, what's up, mom? She laughing, she said, son, guess what I did? I, you know, they've been making me eat applesauce and, and I'm thankful for that and they've been letting me drink fluids now, which I couldn't do for a long time, but, the, but today I snuck me some chicken. <laughs> and she said, she was so slick with it, she said, and I ate it behind my mask. <laughs> said, this lady right here, man, I tell you, that's my mama, y'all. I love you, mama. So the way I'm going to start this, this message is I really want us to engage. I want to start out with the foundation of engagement, and I mean real engagement, because this is what I've come to understand. When you engage the message and not man, transformation can happen. So I need us to engage, and I really want you to play a part in this. So what I'm going to do, I love connecting history, present, real-life stories to the Bible. Because what I've come to understand, everybody can't get the stuff from the Bible, y'all. Like, some people hear the stories in the Bible and they think that's magical stuff, so it doesn't really connect. They think, okay, that story is cool, but I ain't got that kind of power. So sometimes we got to make it relevant. We got to connect it to real life people. We got to connect it to real life stories so people can grab on and believe that it can be true for them. And that's what I'm going to do today. I asked God to infuse my mother's story into this thing. I, only, I didn't know she was coming until about two days ago. So I'm going to let the Holy Spirit lead me, and I, I feel like it's going to be a great thing. But I want to start with one of my favorite people of history. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a quote up. No cheating. You can, I want you all to engage. Whoever knows it first, after I read the quote, we in the church, I need obedience. <laughs> After I read the quote, cause I know we got some people here, as soon as the quote go up, I, I, no, I, no. let's have some restraint and obedience. After I read the quote, then I want anybody who knows to actually say who it is. After. I read the quote. Can you put the quote up for me? Nah. -uh. It's all right. I'll read it if I have to. Go ahead. Just read it. All right. So I'm going to just read it. The quote says, I had reasoned this out in my mind. There was one or two things I had the right to. 
liberty, or death. If I could not have one, if I could not have one, I would have the other. For no man should take me alive. I should fight for my liberty as long as my strength lasted. And when the time came for them, for me to go, the Lord would let them take me. Who am I? This dude being, I thought y'all was going to be disobedient. They the ones being disobedient. Touch my, God, Lord Jesus. It's all right. I, I call her the mother. I call her the mother, y'all. That lady right there, if you ain't never, if you ain't never read something so aligning to a Bible story that's not in the Bible, you need to read Harriet Tubman. That lady was one of the craziest faith-having people I know. Oh, y'all, see, they don't, they don't tell us the whole story, y'all. You got to do what I said, engage the messages. Engage the messages. Just a few points of what I've got from Harriet's life. The first one is to, to get some of your biggest blessings, you'll have to go against societal norms. You'll have to go against societal norms. It, 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 <laughs> it's not easy, but it's worth it. I like to think about Harriet Tubman. And when I think about her, I think about Romans 12 and 2. And, and, and what I connect to it is, see, Romans 12 and 2 says this. Do not be shaped by this world. Instead, change within by a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to decide what God wants for you. And you will be able to know what, what is good and pleasing to God and what is perfect. This lady was very sure about what God had for her and what he didn't. I don't know if you know her story, but the lady was bust over the head, gashing, bleeding, and they didn't give her no hospital treatment, no nothing. They put her back in the field in about two or three days. But she survived. Some people said that she had some mental issues. I'm gonna say all of us that do this work have to have some mental issues. You got to be a little crazy. Mm -hmm. But from reading her quote, here's a few things that I've pulled. In the beginning, she says, I had reasoned this out in my mind. One of the biggest things we'll have to do if we want to get from where we are to where, we, where God wants us to be is make sure that our thoughts are in, in place. Right thoughts are in place. Because how many times do you know that your thoughts are everything that your life represents? Nothing happens without a thought first. And this lady did everything she did because her thoughts, she had reasoned Listen to what she says, though, in her own mind. This wasn't a conversation between nobody else. This was between her and herself. And when you're going to get from where you are to where God wants you to be, it's going to have to be you and God, and you're going to have to hear his voice, and you're going to have to know where he wants you to be and where he doesn't. So that leads me to say this. So many of our challenges will come not from what we see with our two eyes, but what we let live between our two ears. Right. 
Catch the piece that I said, let live. You have the power to evict them. But she made up in her mind that what I see is not what will be. God has greater for me. She made up in her mind. And if we're going to take this journey from where we are to where we want to be, where God wants us to be, we have to master our thoughts. And most of them are thoughts within our own self. Not from the world, not from my friends, not from anybody, within my own self. The second piece I pull from this thing is she says, there was one of two things I had the right to, liberty or death. In my own translation, what she is saying is, either death will lead me to my Lord or life will lead me to my freedom. Sometimes you got to make up. It's death or life, life or death. Some people will come into your life, and it's life or death, people. And we ain't serious enough about the relationships and who we allow in our space, the energies. We're not serious enough sometimes. But I just want to yank that piece out that she had made up her mind about something. And so many times we know people's stories, but we don't really investigate their lives. I don't know if you ever heard about the water story, but I love this because right here, I don't know if you can see it, but it says the Moses of her people. And a lot of people say she's the Moses of her people because she led so many people to freedom. But then she got her own water story, just like Moses had with the Red Sea. So a lot, some, some of y'all might not know it, so let me tell you how I read it. On one of her journeys, she was, she was taking the same path that she normally took. You can read it. She said, I heard the voice of God tell me to go into this uncharted water. I'm walking my regular path that I've been successful on. Catch it. But I hear the voice of God say reroute. <laughs> and, and he doesn't just say reroute. He said, but go in troubled waters. They say she looked at the waters. She didn't know how deep it was. She had some men with her, and they didn't know how deep it was. And she plunged into the water anyway. They said the men sitting there like I would have, like this lady is crazy. But I think we already know who was with her. They say the, other, the men didn't move until she got to the other side. What I love about that is she's giving us a message. Sometime your rerouting in your faith will be an invitation for other people to come on in. And they said the men came across. It's a trip because when you really read history, you, re you read how many of our black women was leading the movement. But they won't tell us about that. She, they got to the other side. They made it to freedom. And the story says, peep this, that on that particular day, the slave masters and the slave catchers had set up on her normal route and was about to kill her. But she listened to the voice of God. My God. Somebody. Uh. 
Jesus. Man, man, man. This personal for me, because this is my walk. Because see, what he pulled me out of, I, it ain't optional to me. I, 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 I did things on my own, and that didn't work out. It led to a whole bunch of trauma and trials and tribulations. So when he tell me to walk through the water, I'ma just step on in now. And sometimes you just gotta step out in faith and step on in. My God. Hmm. I'll, I'll end talking about the mother by saying this. What I'm a, so what I'm going to teach, what the setup is, it, 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 it aligns because my mother had to take a leap of faith. And I and my brothers and her are the product of that. Mother Harriet had to take a leap of faith. And so many, we write books about her and we are the product of that. You got to catch the alignment, people. Engage the message, not the messenger. So what we're going to talk about, the way I want to break this down, that the, the small process that we need to do is have better thoughts, which leads to better decisions, that leads to freedom and deliverance. Mm -hmm. so, so that'll lead me to the title of my sermon. And the title of the sermon will be, I can't stay here anymore. We have to make up our mind about some people, places, and things that I can't stay here anymore. My mother made a decision, I can't stay here anymore. The mother Harriet made a decision. I can't stay here anymore. And there are some of us sitting in this room that have sat and just sat in suffering in silence. And God is saying, I'm going to push you because I don't want you to stay here anymore. I have bigger things for you. I have greater things for you. I want to use you in a new way. I have glory on your life. You can't stay here anymore. So we'll travel. I feel pressure, so let me go ahead and get to the word because I feel the saint saying, you better get to that Bible. <laughs> Some of the saints. Better. I, we love Harriet. We love your mama, but you better get to that Bible. <laughs> I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to be obedient because I could preach them too by myself. But if you would travel with me to Mark 5, we'll start at 25. We're going to visit another woman. Uh-huh. Yeah. We done made this Women's Day, huh? That's every day, Lauren. Say it again. That's every day. That's every day when you know what you know. And this woman is known in the Bible as the woman with the issue of blood. Hmm. The story, if you engage the message... This story will give you breakthrough beyond anything you can imagine. My God, this lady, that lady, that lady, all lined. What I love about preaching this message when God started to download it to me is I realized what he was doing. We don't normally see where we get the pull word from history, present, and our ancestors, or the Bible. Bible. So there, what I get to do is take a biblical message, align it with a historical message, and then align it with a present message. Thank God good. Mm -hmm. If we read the scripture, Mark 5, 25 through 6, we meet this woman. She's in dire need of help. Verse 25 starts like this. A woman in the crowd 
had been suffering for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors, and over the years she had spent everything she had to pay them. But she had gotten no better, matter of fact, she got worse. She had heard about Jesus. So she came up from behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. Listen, for she thought to herself, mm. I, I didn't say it, it says it right there. She thought to herself, uh huh. If I can just touch, his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, the, ble the bleeding stopped. And she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Jesus realized at once that healing power had gone out of him, from him. So he turned around in the crowd and asked who touched my robe. Ah, Jesus, I make your way. His disciples said to him, Look at this crowd pressing around you. How can you ask who touched me? But he kept on looking around to see who had done it. Ah, that's a key point right there. Then the frightened. Then the frightened woman, trembling at the realization of what had happened to her, came and fell to her knees in front of him mm. and told him what she had done. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. Here's a, here's a small part that I'm going to bring back to your attention. While he was still speaking to her, messengers arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. Hmm. They told him, your daughter is dead. There is no use for troubling the teacher now. Hmm. But Jesus overwhelmed them and said to Jairus, don't be afraid. Just have faith. It's a lot to unpack in that. There's a lot to unpack in that. But I'll start right here with the thoughts. Thoughts. The power of what we say to ourselves. The power of what we say to ourselves. Here's something I want to put on your radar to remember about when you're, when you're trying to master your thoughts. Most times you can't control what thoughts come to your head. Because most of our thoughts that come to our head come from our subconscious. Our subconscious is this, 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 this some people call it a box. And it is accumulated experiences of life. And our thoughts pop up based on this box. But what we need to understand is while you can't control what comes to your mind, you get to control what you do with them. So when people say the power of the mind, then it's not actually the power of your thoughts. It, you get to control what you do with the thoughts that come to your head. And that might sound simple, but if we all be honest, most of us don't even understand that and don't think it's true. Our thoughts come to our head and they control us. But what are we talking about? We're talking about getting from where we are to where God wants us to be. So let's break this down a little bit. First, we must recognize 
Our thoughts are the entering spaces to our destinies. I'm going to say it again. Our thoughts are the entering spaces to our destinies. That's a huge statement. Because you, 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 you have bad thoughts that will lead you to a destiny. You have good thoughts that will lead you to a destiny. Everybody sitting in this room was based on a thought. It could have been a changed thought. You could have said, I'm not going to church yesterday. Woke up this morning and said, I'm going to church. Changed thought. Thought. She must have had that experience right there. <laughs> it's all about thoughts. And, 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 and here's, here's what I get. That all of these three stories, my mother, Mother Harriet, when it comes to thoughts, it's not about people, places, or things. It's not about circumstances. It's about understanding the power of thoughts. This woman shows us. Now, you have to understand who this woman is. She is bleeding and has been bleeding for 12 years years she is not supposed to even be amongst people but what she thought about herself and about Jesus mm. Mm -hmm. because here's here's one thing I, I understand sometimes we think one thing about Jesus and God but we don't think about ourselves connected to them so we know God can do all things Jesus can do all things but we don't believe he can do all things through us but we quick to say the scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Trippy part about that text is the strengthening part is a lot of process. And most of us don't want to do it. So if we know that our thoughts lead to our destinies, we know that all women understood that it ain't about people, places, and things, or circumstances. It's all about me. Then it leads us to say this. Some of us, by looking at this lady's story, let me give you this. She comes into a crowd where she's not welcome. They could actually do harm to her for being amongst them. Here's, here's the trippy part about this, is that if you look at the, at the passage right before this, remember I talked about the, the guy named Jarius, and look what the passage says. It says, Jesus, this is 21 through 24, this is not going to go up on the screen, because I've got to just tell you about the way this lady had to think. It said, Jesus got into a boat, this is verse 21. And again, went back to the other side of the lake, where a large crowd gathered around him at the shore. Then a leader of the synagogue, a, a, a person of power, whose name was Jairus, arrived. And when he saw Jesus, he fell at his feet, pleading fervently with him, my little daughter is dying. Now his daughter was 12 years old. The lady had an issue for 12 years. If you, if you, if you, Engage the Bible, that number 12 is very, very, it's, it's powerful. Huh. It's, every time you see it, 12 disciples, 12 tribes of Judah. I think it's in the Bible about 180 times. He said, my daughter is dying. He said, please come and lay your hands on her and heal her so she can live. Peep this. Jesus went with him. Like, Jesus just went with him. So obviously this man is somebody that Jesus respects. And I say that to say, if this lady showed up to intervene on this man's blessing, Jesus is on the way to save his daughter. Can you imagine the thoughts that this lady had to have to say, because I've heard of this Jesus, today I'm choosing to be selfish about my life. 
And sometimes you got to choose to see yourself in an assignment where God is calling me to something and I see him coming through. I need to step in and get mine. Sometimes you got to be selfish with your Savior. God, I need you right now. I love the old school uh, song by Paul Morton. He said, Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me. And some of us are sitting idle watching other people get blessed because our thought process is a mess. We, but, but, but look at this lady. She could have looked at Jarius and said, oh, that's the leader of the synagogue, so of course he getting blessed. That's, the, that's a, a person of high place, so of course Jesus going to bless him. Oh, but she didn't choose to say that. She said, no, I need what I need right now. And sometimes you just got to make up your mind that I see a blessing flow and I'm going to get on in. I don't think we serious enough. Because if they told us it was a line for a million dollars, everybody will be there. And we'll be fighting for position. But when God is coming through, we ain't serious like that. Change your thoughts. Got to be willing to step into that thing. So many of us sit by idle. Oh, they getting blessed. Oh, they getting blessed. Man, there's a time, sometimes I've seen people get blessed and I knew God was on them and I made sure I made coats to them. And I said, hey, I can tell the anointing. Can you pray with me? Can you touch me? See, I ain't standing here because I ain't been had crazy faith. I've had to have crazy faith. And my crazy faith was built because I saw my mama come through some crazy things. I saw God do amazing things, so there's this thing that was built in me. So sometimes we just got to be aggressive about getting what God has for us because that is the only thing that will bring us to a place where we get from where we are to where we should be. But it all starts with our thoughts. The last thing I'll highlight about this, this, this woman is what you see in her story is desperation over intimidation. But see, what happens with most of us is we let desperation keep us stuck instead of activated us. But this lady's story shows us that when there's desperation, somebody is sitting in this house right now and you're desperate for God. But you haven't made a move. I hear him today saying, today is your day to be released. There's freedom in the house. I dare you to be desperate enough. Like this woman. I don't care if these people kill me. I don't care. I, I've been through enough. She's saying I've been through enough. And this might be my last chance to touch this savior. I just need to touch his robe. I don't need his acknowledgement. I, don't, I just need to touch his robe. Her story leads me to ask us, where are we positioning ourselves? Are we intentional about where we're positioning ourselves? Are we just blowing with the wind? That'll lead me to talk about decisions. Hmm. God downloaded a lot with this decision thing. The first thing I want to highlight in her story, if we can move to the next scripture, give me next screen, is her story shows us, it's not necessarily in here, but so many times when you're going to get from where you are to where God wants you to be, you're going to have to move along. Oh, we don't like that one. <laughs> You're going to have to move alone. What the Bible don't show us is where she came from. But we can use our imagination 
Because if you read in Leviticus 15, it tells you about how they treated women with issues like this. She couldn't be amongst people. She couldn't be in the church. She couldn't even be with her family. So who was she with, Brother Wayne? She wasn't locked in jail somewhere. She was with other sick people. And on this day, can you imagine, just like so much of our family and our community, when you make your mind up that you're going to make a move, it's going to be haters all around. And they're going to tell you, well, why you think you're going to do what you do? But you got to make your mind up that today I'm making a decision to move from where I am to where I want to be. She made her mind up and then she did it. She made a decision. Once them thoughts get activated, don't think about it too much. Move. Because the enemy is sitting there waiting to pounce on your thoughts. And if you give him a split second, he do what he do. He'll snatch that thing. The text says, then the frightened woman tribbling at the realization of what had happened to her. Now if we investigate the text, hmm, why is she trembling? She just got healed. For me, I would have got healed and been out of there. I'm free. Can't nobody tell me nothing. Out of there. Y'all know, because y'all would have did it too. Got Instagram, look, I'm free. Facebook, I'm free. Look at me, I'm new. We'd have been flossing. Showing off. But she didn't, she didn't do that. She stayed. And if you investigate the text, you got to say, why did she stay? The text tells us that she's, she's healed. But still, she's frightened, trembling. But if you pay attention to the context, she's amongst people that if they ever figure her out, it's ugly. But do you know why I think she stayed? Because it's based on one of the biggest decisions we got to make when God touches us. And he does things for us. She stayed because she knew she had to give him glory. And this is one of our issues. See, we get the blessing, and the blessing becomes our God. We run off, and we make the blessing our God. It's the man, it's the woman, it's the money, it's the car, it's the house. It becomes our God. We, we, we come to church every week as long as we don't got it. But the minute we get it, we change positions. And the text says, listen, look at this. It says she, she, she's frightened and she's trembling. So she's not fearful of her healer. She's not fearful, fearful of the healing. So she has to be fearful of her haters. And this is why we so scared to give God glory sometimes. It's because our haters might judge us. You got so many people that'll tell you, you ain't new. Oh, you think you better than me? Oh, you think you, but I tell you something. When you make your mind up to say, I don't, get, I don't care. I'm going to give God glory no matter what. Something will happen in your life. I ain't make it up. It's in the text. Watch this. Watch this. Let me get, let me get finished. It says, she fell to her knees in front of him. Hold on. What? In front of him? Do you know she started out in behind him? But now she's got repositioned. See, when you make a decision, it'll reposition you. The deal wasn't sealed until she chose to give him glory. And she knew it. She knew it. It repositioned her, y'all. Look at it. And this, this is what I put. I said, her decision got her reposition, 
Her decision took her from front, from, from the back to the front. Now that she's in the front, the front gives her a new encounter. From her new encounter, she went from touching to talking. Oh my God. She went from talking. It says now she's in the front of him and she told him what she had done. She just wanted to touch his robe, but her decision got her repositioned and now she gets to talk to her savior. We close with the freedom and deliverance she's received. It, 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 freedom and deliverance. Results that come from faith activated. Her faith was activated. She started with hope because Hebrews 11 says, now faith is those things hoped for. That's why when we wear, I think a lot of people don't understand that. That's why when we wear hope dealer shirts, hope precedes faith, y'all. And why is that important? Because people need to see your story so that they can have hope. So she had to return so everybody can hear, see her glory story, and see that they might have some hope. But, the, but the, I'll end with this. She says, it says, and he said to her, daughter, new identity. Your faith has made you well, a new body. Go in peace, a new mind. Your suffering is over, a new life. I just came by to tell somebody that when you make up your mind to serve God, when you make up your mind to change your thoughts, when you make up your mind to have new decisions, God will reposition you and he'll give you freedom and deliverance. Can I get an amen in the house? Yes, Lord. Somebody came here to get free and I pray that this word has blessed you.